Welcome back, everyone. This is Eric Fallon playing Magical Bringer Corona the movie, the Playa Arc. Last time we started with Subaru making breakfast for herself and her young uncle Akira, going to the pool and going to have lunch with some classmates, and getting annoyed at Corona before being interrupted by a police siren, which she has decided to investigate. I look over the city from out of the way buildings, fire escape. No signs of smoke rising from fires. But the sirens resounding through the city affirm there is an incident. I took my cell phone from my sports bag and extended the antenna. Dial number 110. Putting it to my ear, I heard the sounds of the police wireless. This 110 is the Japanese police emergency number, similar to 911. I get the impression that she's not dialing the number exactly as far as calling into it, so much as like listening into what's on the police band. This is Kanagawa 46, arriving to Kotataki at Yokoyama Zone 2, Ron Ron Mart. One cork stabbed in the chest and severely wounded. Suspect male, about 5 foot 6 in his 20s, black jeans, blue shirt, baseball cap, looks to be fleeing towards Yokoyama Zone 5. As all uh, measurements and currencies I have in the game here are converted with rough equivalents from the Japanese text. Tataki, that's code for a robbery. And this one caused serious injury at a convenience store in broad daylight. Unforgivable. I pulled out a long white strip of cloth and tied it around my head. Checking to make sure I'm not seen, I start up the main program. Now loading. Okay. Lightning Revolution! And Playa has her own transformation sequence and her own theme music which is a remix of the final battle music against Playa in the Playa chapter of the previous game. Ladies form setup complete. The part of my head reads my brainwaves and starts up the system. Initial energy 45%, start auto charge, quasi emitter and quasi collector on standby, ion speed at 4.5 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Lifting off. My feet rose off the fire escape. The law of action and reaction, and the law of conservation of momentum. Invisible wings cause an ion wind, enough to levitate a 95-pound human being. Electromagnetic barrier in place, switching to rapid flight mode. Tilting the flow of charged particles sideways, I advance forward. I may not completely understand the theory behind it all, but I know how to use the wings. Now, I just fly. And of course, speed is her specialty. I fly straight from the Kasugana station area to Yokoyama Zone 5. It takes just 8 seconds. IR radar activated, searching for a match from the skies. Multiple life signs found. Of them, those moving in a run, also in low traffic back allies, 5 matches. Confirming target visually. Black jeans, blue shirt, baseball cap, 1 match. Halt! What, uh, what the? The man is flustered as I suddenly touch down in front of him. Red stains on a blue shirt. Undoubtedly the suspect. You'd be lucky to get a hundred dollars from a convenience store, harming an honest worker over such a paltry son? The man groans and strikes back. His face shows he's in a hurry and on edge. He doesn't need to say a word to confirm that he's the suspect. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? And you call yourself an adult? Shut up, what's it to ya? Without a second thought, the man bellowed out in rage and charged me. His eyes are bloodshot and mindless. This type is the easiest to handle. Wrath of the heavens, come forth! In the air drift unions of oxygen and hydrogen, H2O, in short, water. Halting its thermal vibrations freezes it, it's then rubbed together at high speed. Pleiades form absorbs the electricity that this friction generates. I focus the electrical energy generated by this perpetual mechanism into the rod on my hands and release it. And... Thunder Discharge. Yeah. Ha! Taking 40 kilowatts of electrical emission made the man's body jump. Though I held back on the voltage, it's still comparable to a stun gun. This is enough to handle a mere flesh and blood human. He finally relinquished consciousness and flopped, unmoving to the ground. Mission complete. I can just leave him here and the police will take him into custody. 
The bloody shirt is proof enough. Caught red-handed in robbery assault and attempted murder. Why would you throw your life away like that for the little bit of cash in the convenience store's tills? It's a whistling noise. And... Someone suddenly whistled from my rear as I looked down at the man. That can't be. I didn't sense anyone there at all. Beautiful, good show. Definitely had that whole magical girl justice feel to it, yeah? You're... Creeping chaos, Nyara Totep. Remember me? Yes, I remember you. Yeah, I guess you would, yeah? We beat each other up enough. The Therian trope, Nyara Totep, servant of Demon Lord Belzebuth. Specializing in acrobatic martial arts, her momentary speed matches or even exceeds mine. Her physical prowess far transcends that of a human. She's mastered using that itself as a weapon. Behind that friendly face lurks a demon's ruthlessness. She once snuck up on me during the struggle for the demon sword a month ago and tried to finish me off. I was saved at the last second then by Sakura Senpai. Don't go bracing for a fight now. I may have hard feelings for your concern, but I'm here on a different mission today, yeah? A different mission? Seen a green-haired run of a demon around? No. Okay, well, if you see her, let Corona or someone know, yeah? That's all I'm here for. I'm busy today, so that fight can wait, yeah? Okay, see ya, yeah. The Therian troop finished instantly. I could probably give chase, but I prefer to avoid reckless involvement as long as there's no need to fight. But one thing she said concerns me. A green-haired demon? A demon significant enough to bring Nyara Totep looking maybe nearby. I have a bad feeling about this. I really hope the Demon Lord Noel freeloading at Sakura Senpai's home doesn't start any trouble. I suppose that's one way to look at how Noel was staying at Corona's place. As long as I'm already transformed, I've decided to go ahead and start patrolling the city. Even with my blue hair and clothes acting as camouflage, I could be noticed if I flew too well. I looked down across the city from a moderately high vantage point. There's a strong, cool, high-altitude wind. The heat isn't as noticeable as on the ground. The weather is favorable. However, if a visitor from another world is loitering somewhere in the city, that gives me good reason to be even more vigilant than I usually... And just as I have that thought, the sounds of brakes and car horns split the air. Has there been an accident? Someone might need rescuing, depending on the scale, so I can't ignore this. Incidentally, my brand of rescuing people is as indirect as possible. Unless it's particularly critical, I leave it to the proper authorities. I have no interest in making a spectacle of myself like Superman. If people know someone is protecting them, they expect it and grow spoiled. That's just reality. Possible urgent legends tell of a defending magical girl of justice. They keep me just distant enough. The horns don't stop honking. It's all the more likely now that something is happening. Why does there have to be incident after incident in this city? And so many major incidents that almost make the robbery seem cute. The legendary black demon sword and the demon lord Belzebub? Give me a break. It's as if I'm in an active volcano and a nuclear missile launching facility and moved into town. How can Mizuki-san live with them and not have something to say about it? I looked down over the city from the shade of the building. Something has happened. A major roadway that was clear until just recently is now jammed with cars and people. On closer inspection, the townspeople are looking above as they clamor. Red, green, yellow, red and green, all three, flashing like neon lights. The signals that govern traffic flow were lighting up nonsensically. This is what's causing the congestion and panic. Is the light out of order? If so, I have no part to play here. But I feel uneasy. It's unscientific, but my gut says someone not of this world is here. I'll move on to scientific proof. Starting subsystem, transpsychic sonar activated. This is a new counter-demon ordinance added in imitation of the perceptive abilities of Amanaga Senpai's Genbu Mirror Relic. 
Supernatural entities like Demons or the Demon Sword give off a pulse and a different wavelength from natural entities, so-called magic energy. If I can detect the location of that energy, finding a hidden demon... There. A girl with black wings is looking down over the city from midair. Emerald green hair, deep green dress, a green demon? So now we're finding out how they met. A closer look shows she's wiggling her index finger slightly, and every time her finger moves, the traffic signal changes irregularly. And green, red, blue. Stop that. Whoa, who are you? I defend order in the city. Stop remote controlling the signals at once. Ah, uh, I'm just setting them free. Walking and stopping for these lamps. Since when do humans become enslaved to machines? The signals just show traffic rules. Humans follow them voluntarily. You must be the green demon Yawa Dota was talking about. You're with them? No, I'm not. If anything, I may be their enemy. Hmm, I can't believe you. And of course, Bellis doesn't trust anyone and runs away. Alright, this should be far enough. Too slow. Yeah, you're fast! Damn it, since it's come to this, I'm taking you down! You intend to fight me? I won't show mercy just because you're a child. Don't treat me like a kid! Here she comes. But I'll hold back a bit and see how things go. And here we are. Play's first battle is against Bellis, of all people. Considering how things end up later, this is kind of unexpected. But considering how they met, it's really not that surprising. And you'll see that as Playa, you have the speed up ability all the time. However, when you're the player character, as I mentioned, it's not nearly as effective as when the enemy has it. And instead of splashes, slashes, we get electrical pulses, thunder cracking noises, zapping. It's nice and thematic. And of course, since this is early in the game, our difficulty is reset to the base level of 30. And Belleth has never been much of a opponent to begin with. So this is going to go by pretty quickly and pretty easily. Now, in addition to having the speed bonus, Playa has a number of other differences from Corona. One of them that's more subtle but does make a significant difference is that Although she's faster, Playa is not as powerful or as durable. She has lower attack and defense scores than Corona, which means she inflicts less damage per hit and she takes more damage per hit. It's not a huge amount, but it is enough to make a difference, especially against some enemies with higher defense. Even Bell's getting an inner attack here. Uh, another difference that's not as obvious is that for Corona, her normal attacks and her special attacks inflict the same damage per hit, not counting Corona Gumblazing, which is special. While in Playa's case, her, each hit in her special attacks inflicts more damage than her normal attacks by a bit. It's still not quite as much as Corona, but that means that with Playa, you especially want as many special attacks as possible. Even more so than as Corona. And here's our first special. Special Round Determination works the same way as when you're playing with Corona. You get to level 1, you automatically get a level 1 special attack. You get to level 2, you automatically get the level 2 special. When you're at least at level 1, but have not just gotten there, you have... I think it's a 1 in 6 chance of getting a special that's available to you, depending on your current level. When playing as Playa, Voltic Blade is essentially the same as Corona Desperado when playing as Corona. You get the 12 hits, you get the regular spacing. 
you get the predictable damage, you get a nice boost to your energy bar. Now, obviously, we're not going to have Subaru swooping in to save Bella from herself, so... This battle just plays out normally. And it's just about done already. Because again, Belt is not that much of an opponent. Yeah, also I've noticed when playing with uh, Corona Plus Playa that if you're... Yeah, when the initiative chips are coming from the right side, it seems to be easier to get the critical if you hit them a bit early, when they're a bit to the left of the center of the graphic. Yeah. And Belleth didn't even get to use a special attack. I think that happened in this... Yeah, I think the same thing happened fighting with Corona, as I recall. I prolonged the battle artificially to give her a chance to do that. Anyway. Lightning strikes true, draining stamina and the will to fight. I won. The Black Wings stop moving, the Demonling's body loses its balance. And goes into a vertical fall. What? Oh no, I went too far. The Demonling lost consciousness. She won't end up being fine if she hits the ground. Reverse propulsion to go into a dive. I swiftly close the distance to the Demonling. The ground glooms ahead like a giant wall with 30 yards to collision. 25, 20, 15, 10. Make it, make it, make it. Caught you. I managed to get my hands to the Demonling's body just barely in time to leave enough room to decelerate. Drawing her unmoving, unconscious body closer, I... Dummy, weren't you listening? I told you I'd take you down. What? The supposedly unconscious Demonling grins and grabs my arm. Then she spins and flings me away, and I'm headed for... the ground! Cancel subsystems and battle system. Redirect all available energy to the electromagnetic barrier. Player Belleth looks pleased with herself. And then, like, oops. Ugh. Red sunlight hits my eyes. A dull pain joins in at the same time. It's been a long time since I've been slammed into the ground like this. Fortunately, I'm alive, once again. I can get back up once more. Hey, you okay? You didn't run away? The Demonling stood right near me. Words of concern came from her mouth. Apparently, she can dismiss her black wings since they aren't out now. Maybe she doesn't want to fly off? I saw you get bit by a mosquito. What? Ahaha, <laughs> don't worry, I chase it off. But if you can get worried about a mosquito bite, you must not be hurt all that bad. I'm surprised. I did some checking while you were out, and you're just a normal human. So is the flying and lightning and stuff alchemy? What? You don't have to be so shocked. I know about this stuff. I couldn't sense the least bit of magic energy from you, and when we fought, it smelled like machinery. You direct the Arctic flow downward to fly, right? Making big invisible wings? From the viewpoint of someone who has magic, my magic must seem unnatural. It's always only a matter of time until I'm added as a normal human. But this demonling is the first to pursue the theory behind it. If you figured out that much, there's not much point in hiding it. As you say, I'm a normal human. I produce effects similar to magic by atomic level operations around me. Huh. Humans sure have come a long way. So, who exactly are you? I'm the fallen angel Belleth. They let the castle call me a demon, but I'm a legitimate angel. Castle? The demon Lord Belzebus? Right. They locked me up there. Locked you up? I take pranks too far or something, so they haven't been letting me out. Not for decades. Decades? Her age is no call for surprise. Demons have extremely long lifespans. The demon lord Noel appears to be a child, but has lived for a century. For this demonling to be decades old is unremarkable for the demon realm. But for decades? 
Why would you lock someone up for decades for taking pranks too far? So I ran away. I was lucky they gave me the chance. And Yara Dotep is here after her, pursuit after decades of confinement. I wonder what the reasoning is. Why such determination to lock her up? We never really did get an answer to that in the Corona story. It has something to do with her being a fallen angel, and it's something more of a protective custody than anything else, but Noelle never really give a complete answer, and Corona didn't really look into it that much, although Osiris was curious enough. She didn't have enough power that I'd consider her much of a real threat. And this demonling, Belleth, is still quite young. She just pranked a traffic light, and the fight was like a childish tussle. I doubt that she ever actually meant to hurt anyone. That's why she didn't flee while I was passed out. A child. She wants to play, to prank, to scuffle. This demon's just being a child. Maybe the demon realm was different, but now that I've seen an innocent child in a state of house arrest, it's going to be okay. I approached the demonling, Belichan, and crouched down with my hands on my knees. This puts our eyes on level. In eyes as green as her hair, I see my face reflected. I'm no friend of the demon lords, so relax. I won't let them have their way. I'll protect you, Belichan. Really? Yes. If they come, I'll drive them off. So you'll be okay now. Stick with me, and you'll be fine. Before I knew it, I had softened my tone, speaking as I would to a child. I gently place a hand on her small head and stroke it. She really is small, just like a child. Thanks. What's your name? Subaru. Subaru Yoshiumi. Subaru, huh? Good name. Subaru. Like the prominent, brilliant stars. We gave you that name because we want you to shine more brightly than anyone else. Yes, Subaru is the Japanese name of the Pleiades star cluster, which is also where her Pleia name comes from. A nostalgic voice comes back to me from a memory and I had shelved away. Am I... shining? Okay, I think this is where I'm going to end this session up. Uh, Fair amount has happened. We've met Bella, fought with her, made friends, promised to protect her, and this sets up the later fight between Playa and Corona and leads into the rest of the game. So for now, this has been Arafelon playing Magical Bringer Corona the movie, the Wings of Pleiades arc. Come back next time for more. Hope to see you then.